Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got a small update for you today. First, I want to apologize to some of my responses covering this topic. You see, there were a few people here that suggested doing this with Tetra. I asked some of my fellow runners and they told me it didn't work. Yet over time, more people were commenting to try it out. So I thought there was something there that I wasn't aware of. Once I tested it myself, well, you were right. And I was wrong. I'm sorry. But this also means Tetra has a lot of untapped potential, and that's what I'm here to show you all today. So let this be known that it's not me that discovered this, I'm sharing what you found and sharing it with everybody else. So thank you for that. Let's move on to this little update on Tenet Tetra, shall we? So basically the only real requirement is to use this on a frame with max or near max duration. Energized Munitions only has base 5 seconds duration, so with 306 that I'm showcasing here, it lasts 15 seconds. Obviously, you don't need to go that high, but it is just more quality of life, so you don't have to cast it as often. This also obviously means it works better on frames that naturally benefit from higher duration. And this is a generic speed buff build to get things to rush to me closer so I can nuke them, essentially rushing to their deaths. It works well on survival and basically, well, most game modes in general. I'm running overextended and power donation to get my strength down to 10% and the mission to speed up enemies by 60%. We know that Speedva's 4 scales with duration and not range. Her 1 also scales with duration and not range, so that's a free 90% damage reduction there. Strength is irrelevant on the build because that only powers her 4's explosion, which we don't care about. Portals are still usable because of overextended simultaneously gutting our strength and buffing our range. We have a bit of efficiency here from Streamline, but I didn't go for Fleeting since I wanted to preserve that 306 duration for Energized Munitions. This means the majority of my kit are duration mods, but that's all you really need on a Speedva. You won't really need a primer for Tetra to work either, so you're free to spend a slot on it for Augur Seeker or Augur Pact. This gives you a 2 set Augur bonus for 80%. Meaning if your shield drops you can cast your 3 twice, or your 3 then 4 and fully regain your shields. Why your 3 first? Because it gained the ability to teleport bullets and projectiles last year, so it is technically the equivalent of an invincible shield. As a safeguard I've chosen to bring Arcane Energize since we're only running 130 efficiency, but I don't think it is really necessary. Arcane Acceleration will help to boost Tenet Tetra's alt fire spam further because we aren't spending weapon mod slots on fire rate. Finally, Prime Shirt Footed in the X list because, well, Tetra's Altfire is dynamite. You've learned from the Brahma, I don't think you want to run Tetra's Altfire without it. So let's take a look at this Tetra again. This is the full crit build we will be using since mine is still on heat. Once it's on innate toxin, I'll switch over to this build where I drop Heavy Caliber for Rhyme Rounds. Optionally, you can swap Serration on the second build for Heavy Caliber for better spread, but that's up to you. 13.28 meter radius with zero fall off is already a lot. Now there is something I missed and didn't tell you last time. I previously stated that Tetra's reload is 2.2 seconds. This isn't entirely true. The semi-auto mode actually has a separate reload stat distinct from the auto mode. The auto fire mode reload is 2.2 seconds. The semi-auto mode is 1.8 seconds. Cool cool that's small and all not that much of a difference, but this is not where it ends. That's only the first thing. Now the next thing is I actually have arcane unlockers now and I now also own a rank 5 primary merciless. Remember as I said this arcane has a built in plus 30% reload into it. Now look what happens if I put it on. Reload is now down to 1.38 seconds. That's super manageable. This time I'm going for Bane of Grenier actually, because since we are using Primary Merciless, we need tankier enemies to measure up the damage potential against since the Simulacrum lacks the health and armor multipliers of Steel Path. Primary Merciless basically doubles our total damage output, so we're going to spawn them at level 150, these Draco Manic Bombards, since that arcane will straight up delete the heavy gunners. Let's take a look and see how much better this weapon handles now. I told you this could be Brahma's successor, right? And some of you told me that's not true. That's impossible. There's no way. Well, let's try this thing out again. Keep in mind I don't even have Arcane Avenger or Combat Discipline on the build this time, so I'm losing a lot of crit, but that's because I'm running a Speedva build. I could just as easily run a Slova build instead that doesn't need power donation so I can actually slot Avenger and Combat Discipline. But what's the game with a little bit of risk and fun of sped up enemies to kill you? So let's play. Here comes the Drakar Manic Bombards. Now then, time to say hello. What we are going to do is walk up to these enemies and cast Energized Munitions, that is all. Now it's the time to shoot and let's see what happens. Well then. 
we still have more shots we can spend, right? We got the Galvanized Multi-Shot and Merciless stacked now, so let's try that again. And there they go again. Well, let's pull up the Brahma. What is the TTK of Brahma on this group of 20 Drakar Manic Bombards? This is the build I'll be using. It's the exact same build in the last video on the Tetra comparison, and I've even taken the liberty of slapping Primary Merciless on this too. I'm also going to swap this to Bane of Grunir, just like the Tetra. I don't have the primed version, if you were wondering. Anyways, here we go. Drakar Manic Bombards once again. Well, that took quite a few shots, didn't it? And now that we triggered Galvanize Multishot and Merciless, let's do it one more time just like Tetra. And once again, you can see it struggles to compete with the Tetra now. There you have it. I'm pretty sure it's settled at this point. Tetra has become spam heavy with a 4 shot mag, has better damage and better AoE, no fall off, and honestly shoots as fast as Brahma now. And no longer an issue with the ammo economy either. I'll leave you with the footage of this in Steel Path. I now pass the ball back to your court. What are your thoughts on Tetra now? Do you actually use your ability kit when you use Brahma? There isn't much there that can help it. Fall off is still its biggest enemy, and there are no abilities that can save that. Tetra? It just needed a little bit of ammo efficiency on demand. Actually, I'll give you a little extra bonus sneak peek. Wonder what happens if you trigger Arcane Pistolier? Well, here you go. Of course that means you actually need a headshot kill with your pistol, but hey, if it's regular Steel Path fodder units exist, right, so this is an option. If you're gonna bring this to level cap though, which, by the way, it can do perfectly fine, Energized Munitions is probably the more practical option, as even fodder is super tanky at that point. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave a like, or better yet, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I'm trying my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible. Like I've done with covering the Tempest story and the Sisters of Parvos updates. Stick around if you want to see more interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. I'm also preparing to get you new information out always whenever an update drops. You don't want to miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and see you all next time.